plugin of the week is the UVI Rotary. Rotary is a uh, plugin by UVI that models rotating speaker systems, primarily those uh, created by Donald Leslie back in the uh, 1940s is when he started creating them. And initially they were designed uh, to be used with Hammond organs, although Hammond didn't pick them up at the time. And uh, what ended up happening is he just continued to uh, create and build the cabinets and sell them as additions. Uh, to the existing Hammond organ. They became very popular and eventually all of this through all kinds of sales ended up merging together. What ended up happening was a whole series of different cabinets with a rotating horn and a rotating drum or lower bass mechanism uh, was created as a way of trying to emulate the sound characteristics of pipe organs. So a Hammond organ was somewhat generic sounding relatively without this technology. And what he realized with these huge pipe organs was that uh, because of the distances between the pipes and how far away they were from it, there was a sound characteristic that really spread out that was wider. So his attempt was to make the sound move more. And uh, the idea was to take a, a horn, a rotating horn, I'll show you a picture right here, a uh, rotating horn att attached to a motor mechanism. So the signal would be fed out through the two horns. There were some models that had one horn um, that these horns would be moving around and so essentially what you would be getting is a Doppler effect. So if you set up a microphone here you would get a combination of a Doppler effect as the sound was going by it would be moving but also the uh, volume amplitude modulation would also exist because as this came by the microphone the sound would get louder for that instant. Um, and the original was designed it only had one had one speed attached to it um, and then the um, bass mechanism, the woofer here, so it, the signal would come in, go through a crossover network, high frequencies would be sent up to the horn, low frequencies would be sent down uh, to uh, the low end driver here, and then this would uh, feed into a rotating drum that basically has one open side, so as the signal spins around, it would be basically throwing the sound around the whole cabinet, and as you can see here, uh, this is a uh, 122 uh, Leslie cabinet. Uh, you can see that there's uh, um, vents here for the sound to radiate outward of the low end through here and for the high end horn here, and then all the mechanics exist here. The electronics are pretty simple. Uh, it actually just has a volume control on it. And in the original design, uh, Donald Leslie had it set up where you would open up all the sliders, all the tone uh, sliders, uh, turn the volume uh, pedal up all the way and set it so that it wouldn't uh, distort just below distortion and then you could set the sound whatever way that you wanted to but in actuality most people would drive it and power into it now eventually what people did was in studio is aside from using it for Hammond organ which many studios had they uh, actually started patching in or modifying the electronics so they could feed other audio signals in so you could patch a guitar in a vocal signal in and this started a revolution that uh, the earliest documented thing I can find, although there may be one sooner, it goes back to Revolver, uh, where John Lennon had his voice put into the speaker system. So what UVI has done is they've gone and they've done extensive modelings of many of the different cabinet sizes that go on through the years. So if you go back to uh, the 30 series, this is like the early original model that only had a tremolo setting. It didn't have the corral setting that you see here with the two speeds. The 122 was probably the most popular cabinet. That's more or less what I was showing you there on the 145. The 722 was, uh, in, and some of these later models here were part of a Pro Series. And the Pro Series uh, models actually, if I show you a picture here, was designed for touring. So the amplification circuitry was more powerful. Some of them, uh, like some of the 900 series ones, had like um, 100 watt amplifiers uh, that were built in or multiple amplifiers to deal with uh, the signal for the high end and low end. And this was designed more for touring. It's got handles on the side. It had wheels at the base and all of that so you could wheel it around. And then there was another uh, version, uh, 16, which was a cabinet that was designed for guitars because people started using this uh, to feed their guitar through. So this is something that sort of became... Uh, something that morphed into a studio tool or a way of doing it. And so there are other plugins that have emulated some of the basic characteristics, and usually they do give you just very simplified settings where you have, you know, the corral and the tremolo setting. Maybe you have some speed adjustments and a little, you know, maybe an overdrive or something. 
what UVI has done here is they've gone in and they have done a far more extensive modeling. So now you have all these different cabinet types. You have two microphones, which you can actually move around and, and just kind of set up, you know, uh, in, you know, on your own. So you can actually just kind of wheel them around whatever way that you want. Um, or you can actually use some of the settings here, which bring it closer to the cabinet or farther away. You have width controls that allows you to go outside of the stereo spectrum, reverse the left and right. And so uh, you have distance controls, width controls. You can offset the angle one way or the other. You can skew the microphones so they're more distant from each other. And all of these characteristics model uh, give you the ability to kind of move around and do some creative um, work with it. It gives you a, just a, an unbelievable, unlimited amount of options. Now, some other cool things about it here. Um, in, in the standard unit itself, um, what you had were essentially two speeds. So at some point, once they went from a single speed, which was just the tremolo setting to the corral setting as well, and you had two settings, you would have those two speeds and then a break, which would basically stop the mechanism in between. So what they've done here is they've taken the corral setting so that it starts out as standard 0.8 hertz, uh, but you can go all the way down to 0.1 hertz and then all the way up to three hertz from here on the corral setting. And then if you flip it over here to the tremolo, it picks up from 3 hertz and then goes all the way up to 10, uh, 10 hertz. And that gives you a pretty broad range of uh, control over the speed of the mechanism. You have a separate drive button. So this allows you to overdrive the uh, uh, input amplification circuitry. So when you run in, it actually runs through uh, tube circuitry. And uh, so the gain control there, if you just crank it up or drive more level into it, has a really great sound. And so you could use that amazing for guitars if you want to have the distorted vocal coming through the horn with that whole setup. That's how that sound is basically done. And this was a big part of reamping things in studio work. So it's not as if this is, um, you know, sort of some recreation of something that didn't exist. You also have separate controls for the horn level. So you have a horn level and a drum level. So this way, depending upon the input signal that you put in, you may not get a lot of information in the, in the drum. So you can rebalance that out if you want to, or you get may get more information in the drum, which is the low end uh, speaker uh, versus the horn. So this gives you some balance controls and then an output gain control. So as if all of this wasn't enough, if you go over here and click on the settings, now you get a whole other series of controls. Because part of what would give like a Hammond organ with a Leslie cabinet its sound was also part of the room characteristics that it was recorded in. And this, this became like a big part of making it actually, it's a classic, such a classic sound that without it, it almost seems like dry and unnatural. So what they have here, which is really cool, when you run it through the microphones that are set here and you establish a distance uh, of those microphones. So here it's showing that these microphones are one meter away. So I can put them right up to the cabinet if I want to and make the signal drier, or I can move them farther away and get more room sound in. Um, so when I do this, I can actually control those characteristics of the room. So how much damping is on the early reflections, how many orders of early reflections, so I can basically turn it off, or uh, I can kind of bring it up here to uh, first, second, third order of uh, reflections. I can control the amount of the reflections, the radius of them. Uh, so you have all of these parameters, and the drive preemphasis uh, allows you to to feed this into the uh, amplification of the drive circuitry of the um, of the um, actual uh, input of it. So basically tube driving. So this just gives you an extra control in that. And the delay compensation compensates for the fact that the microphones would be at a distance and therefore the signal would be delayed. So one meter would be approximately a three millisecond delay or so. So this would compensate for that. There's also box diffusion, right? So uh, you can actually have the box uh, closed or open um, and then you can set the uh, level. Uh, that's like in interior box diffusion. So all the stuff that's going on, you know, inside and radiating around and you could turn that off. You have uh, three different horns to select from or you can turn that off if you don't want the uh, filtered sound that occurs or the tonal character of the horn. Um, you could select from a variety of different directivity characteristics. So these are like uh, ways of um, 
setting up like what microphone it is that you're feeding. So if you're feeding like an Omni microphone, it will give you a certain characteristic. Cardio will give you another characteristic. What they have here is drum cardio is more like a signal that, uh, you know, uh, you know, like a, a dynamic mic that would actually be more directional. And so therefore you'll get more width, but kind of a smaller sound with the Omni, you would probably get, you'll get a more natural kind of sound. And so these different characteristics allow you to kind of work with that. And then you also have similar settings for the drum. So you have different filter, you could turn the drum off or keep the filtering for the drum there on. And then you also have the different setups as well here uh, for a uh, microphone setup. Now the acceleration deceleration time is a setting that you can use to also create some special effects. And probably the best way of doing this is kind of going through some of the presets and loading in some of the presets just to get an idea of what some of these things are because some of this stuff has been uh, configured or set up in the presets. So if you do this, what this means is that the, it's a mechanical mechanism. Right, so there's actual motors that actually spin around and they're actually kind of noisy, although that's not part of the emulation, so you lose that part of it. But what ends up happening here is that um, it takes a certain amount of time for it to get up to full speed and it also takes a certain amount of time to decelerate when you change it. And a big part of operating um, a Leslie uh, cabinet, it would actually be a little additional um, switch that looks just like this, has this little switch you go back and forth, and part of the sound would be switching between those different settings. So you could actually reside on a particular tone by hitting the brake and then switch back between, you know, uh, the tremolo setting, which is much faster, or the chorale setting, which is much slower. So uh, all this said, let's have a listen. What I have here is just a simple Rhodes track, and it's just simple, clean, basically mono sound. I just want to show you some of the character that you can kind of bring in with the plugin. So we'll start with the plugin bypass just so you can hear a little bit of what's going on here. Okay. So so I have just like a basic sound. Now let's uh, listen to it with a default rotary setting, just so you can get an idea of what that's like. So if I, I can get a tighter sound with the microphones moved in closer to the cabinet. Get more of a roomier sound. is going to stop here for a second. Here. So I'll just uh, put that back to a default 90. So this this will actually be, uh, if you look at the spectrum here, this would be actual left and right, and then this would be essentially going anti-phase or into an out-of-phase area. So if you, if you look at that, this would be your left speaker, this would be your right speaker, obviously center, and then this would be going outside of those uh, areas. So that's that's the basic idea there. And then, of course, you can change the skew, the angle. So, uh, so I can I can set that up there, and then there's a skew which allows me to offset the microphones from each other. All right. So I can I can set those settings up. All right. So you get a good idea of of what's going on with this. So let me just uh, load up the default setting here to kind of put us back where we were, and. All right, so let's let's play around a little bit with the. Right now we're on a tremolo setting. So if I go over here, this is the corral setting. Now I could slow it down, which is very slow.
find a nice natural movement there. Or switch over to the chorale setting, which picks up from there. Or to the tremolo setting, excuse me. So you get all of that in there as well. Again, I can, I can kind of tighten the sound if I want to. So I can get a nice clean sound here. I can balance, put more low end in there. So just to give you an idea, like this is, you know, like if that's, you know, uh, no gain, like the attenuation, it's like 60 dB of attenuation straight up. So it's not like a huge amount. You have the overall gain control here and then the drive control. Of course, this is where he plays softly. So you can grit something up that's really amazing for like uh, vocals and uh, guitars, you know, uh, getting a, you know, like a, you know, gritty, you know, blues kind of sound is really cool. And then you have all these different cabinet modelings, so you can kind of toggle through some of these. designed for guitars. So each one has like a different characteristic kind of sound, so you can kind of add a little bit of that tone in. Now let's dig in a little bit here, and this is where it kind of gets uh, pretty cool. I can actually uh, deal with the early, lessen the amount of room space. Add more of it in. Control the amount of reflection. How wide of a spectrum. All right, this would be no damping. So you can dampen that so this allows you to control how bright or present the room is, and then this allows you to drive out. relative to the uh, drive control that's already there. So here, here's also uh, with the box diffusion. So that can be a way of like warming up the sound if you want to. Uh, there's also different horn modelings. Horn A is a bit brighter. Horn B is a somewhere in between. Horn C has the, the most, you know, biting tonal character in there, warmer. And then you can go through some of the different settings here. So with an Omni set up, it sounds like a Omni uh, condenser mic, like 87 or something. Here's the drum cardio, which is wider, but you notice that the frequency spectrum is narrower, less natural sounding. same thing with the low end. Just, there's not a lot of low end energy here, so this is not going to make like a big difference, so I won't waste um, a lot of time on this. But you get an idea of like, you know, how flexible and how much you can kind of control uh, what's going on here. So let's just uh, play around a little bit more. Just to remind you what the original was like. Mm -hmm. 
and there's just loads of creative things. Sometimes a good way to uh, to figure out somebody's is kind of toggle through some of the different uh, presets, set them up on some sounds, and then uh, look at the settings and notice how the settings are changed. You know. Uh, what directivity settings are set, what filter, what horn, etc. And then you can get an idea of how to kind of create these sounds, where the microphones are placed. There's loads of creative things that you can really do when you drive into it. It's so much more than just, uh, you know, like a tremolo, you know, vibrato kind of plugin that just kind of moves stuff left or right. It's way deeper than that, and you get a lot of really unique tonal characteristics uh, that make this a really, really, really cool plugin. Uh, there's nothing else that I've seen out there like this uh, in terms of an emulation. Uh, this is really, uh, really great work by UVI, and uh, so, and definitely a worthwhile plugin uh, to have if you ever use that type of effect, you know, or that type of setup. And uh, that's it. So that's uh, Rotary plugin by UVI, and uh, that is the plugin of the week.